Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Father God, we just want to thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to assemble this morning to arrive in the beauty of this day. And we thank you for keeping us with a mind to engage in the freedoms that we enjoy. Bless and keep us as a nation, as a state, and individuals that are going through the loss of loved ones. Comfort and keep them, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, first bill up is House Bill 397, uh, Representative Mooney. He is uh, not going to be able to make it here today, so I'm going to carry the bill, turn the gavel over to the Vice Chair, Representative Stringer. All right, House Bill 397 is going to be carried by Chairman Treadaway. Go ahead, Chairman. All right, what this bill is, this is the interlock bill that we passed out of here, I guess, a week or two ago. It was a much thicker version. What happened, there was two... Uh, folks upstairs in LSA working on the bill, and there was a condensed version, and then the version that we passed out of here had all the laws and everything in it. So all this does, again, there's a sunset in there of five years, and it just removes that sunset. And uh, what Representative Mooney was telling me that uh, when this passes, either one passes out of the Senate, he can work with either bill. A rep oh. Yes, sir. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Yes, sir. Uh, got a motion to give the bill a favorable report. Got a second. Any uh, discussion? All in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Bill carries. Turn the chapel back over to the chairman. Thank you, Representative. Uh, that brings us to uh, Senate Bill 120, and that's going to be uh, carried by Representative Wadsworth. And I believe that bill uh, does have an amendment. So just explain the bill, and then we'll get into the amendment. Thank you, Chairman, and also thank you, Body. Um, I'm carrying this bill on behalf of uh, uh, Senators Coleman and Madison. And uh, this, this bill, excuse me, there's an issue in juvenile detention centers that uh, if someone brings contraband into a uh, into a, a jail, uh, that they can be charged. If any individual brings contraband in, into DOC, they can be charged. But if you're dealing with a juvenile detention center, if you bring <coughs> contraband in, uh, they cannot be cannot be charged in there. What this bill does. It basically says that the juvenile detention center can define the issue of contraband and also um, uh, uh, charge individuals and uh, individuals. But uh, in this particular bill, when it went from the House, we passed this out of the... In yeah, the, I was about to say that this was passed out of this committee, I think, a week or two ago. It was, and when it was, it went to the Senate. Uh, the, the Senate version of the same thing, there was an amendment placed on it it said that juveniles could not be charged. If they had contraband, they could not be charged, and also if they, uh, various things. And then and then when it came out of the Senate, it was engrossed with that amendment that a juvenile could not be charged. And then uh, it's my understanding is that there is an amendment being offered to basically take that amendment that the Senate put on it and take it off uh, and make it where juveniles can be charged, just like adults for bringing contraband into a facility. Okay. On that. But the bill, the SB 120 that's in grossness down here, has a provision that juveniles cannot be charged. But with, with, this, with this amendment that's coming up, uh, what that will do, <laughs> it will make it the same as that House bill that, that we passed. So, um, again, this bill passed out of here with the exception of the amendment you just explained. It's my understanding Representative Stringer is going to offer an amendment to strike that language. That's correct. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead. So we got the bills been explained. Is there any discussion on the bill as explained with the amendment that's, that came down from the Senate? Representative Jackson and then Representative Morris. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I just want to 
ask if you just clarify for the people's sake, contraband. Well, they have the ability, to, the facility has the ability to find, if they don't want cigarettes, they don't want marijuana, drugs, uh, guns, cell phones, they, they have the ability to find it, just like DOC and also uh, 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 jails. Thank you so much. I don't have a, a question uh, per se, but just more of a comment. Um, I like it the way it is, of course, but after having further discussion about it, I can pretty much understand why the um, language needs to be struck out. However, I would like for um, some, some things to actually change within the juvenile facility. I was talking to someone and they was telling me about, because I've actually visited um, a facility and they are broken down by different colors and placed in two different rooms based on their behavior pattern. And you cannot rehabilitate when you're telling young folk that um, according to this, you are on this level of um, being bad, being disruptive, and more than likely you're going to end up in prison. That's the way that, that it comes off. Um, it's supposed to be a place to rehab, rehabilitation. We find different things, not just for um, juvenile facility, but for DOC also, to promote what we are going to do to enhance um, incarceration, but we do not come up with ideas that come through that's going to help uh, rehab, right? Because we all know that it, without bodies, the, the business won't work. So we need to have bodies in the beds, but we still have to make it where we're going to do the right thing by these young people and not have them getting ready or prepared to go to prison. Even though um, we are saying that that's not what we're going to do or try to do, unintended consequences always happen, and young people have to be guided the way that we supposed to guide them. And if we're going to target the people who are actually bringing the contrabands in, then that's what we should be doing. And no, no juvenile should have contrabands with inside of the facility. But if we are expecting for a 15 or a 16 year old to turn down any type of contrabands when we can't even get the people that's in prison, that's over the age of 30 and 40 to turn down a cell phone. I just don't understand how we're going to expect for a 15-year-old to do it. I just wish that we would have more things in place to rehab, not divide them based on color, not the, the color of their shirts, right? Not necessarily their skin color, but the color of their, their shirts, or putting them into different dorms based on their behavior, because if I if I have a, a, a problem, I need to be with someone who's going to actually help me out and not uh, we are together and we are labeled. So that that would be something that I would actually like to see. And I got somebody said that they're going to help work on this. So I, I appreciate that effort. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right. Uh, bill has been explained. Uh, we do have an amendment. Uh, we'll get that before us and then uh, see if there's any questions. Uh, Representative Stringer. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> it's going to be on page five. Replace lines 116 through 120 on page five with the following. Section two. Although this bill would have as its. On, it says replace line 126 on page five with the following. Section three, this act shall become effective on the first. All right, the amendment has been explained, and basically what it does, it strikes out the amendment that was added to the bill, puts it back exactly like the bill that was passed out of this chamber a couple weeks ago. Is there any questions on the amendment? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion for favorable report. Representative Jackson, second by Pettis. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right, now the bill is now before us as amended. Do I have uh, any discussion? I got a, a motion by Pettis for favorable report. Uh, all right, second by Fiddler to remove to move the bill out of the committee as amended. 
All in favor? Uh, aye. Okay, by saying aye, all opposed? Okay, the ayes have the bill as uh, has a favor report as amended. That brings us to the next bill, which is Senate Bill 132, Senator Smitherman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's an honor to have you here, Senator. Uh, it's very rare that you come down. You normally have somebody else carry your bill. So welcome to the Public Safety Homeland Security Committee in the House. Well, thank you. I, I, they excuse me from judiciary, and, and uh, I appreciate you get working me in here because at 930 I've got a public hearing in education. So you, get, you took care of me right in this moment. Uh, uh, this bill is really is a... Uh, uh, just one of them what you call real good bills. You know, you have a good bill and real good bills, easy good bill at like that. This, this bill amends the Missing and Endangered Person Alert Act uh, for the providing of alerts to be issued for persons who have been abducted. With, that's not the case now. If someone's abducted, you don't get an alert at all. And so this is just as to the, well, you, you may be, you all may be, you know, telling us about the Amber Alert and, alert about people being, you know, what takes place and with with people, but this that's what this does. It just it it extends that so that we can put that alert out there for people right. to know. Uh, you heard the senator uh, explain the bill. Um, personally, uh, you know, in law enforcement, a lot of years, and I didn't even know that. So I commend you on bringing that. Uh, obviously, needed to be a part of the bill. There's no discussion. I got uh, Representative Gray. Move for a favor report. Yeah, move for a favor report, uh, Representative Gray. Uh, all. Second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed, your bill has a favor report. Thank you all very much. Appreciate you. I wish it was up. easy. This easy upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Some things are. <laughs> Some things really are. Well, can I say a comment? Yes, sir. Uh, now, you must shatter them. Yesterday, for you and I, was really that easy. <laughs> it was pretty easy. It, it uh, was pretty easy. We, we passed the exhibition driving bill, and uh, I, I appreciate that, and thank you for that. I've known you many, many years, way before I got into the legislature, and uh, I can't believe it was the first time in 17 years we passed a bill. Uh, it, it, I, I can't either, but we hey, we started out right. That's a good one. That's right. That's right. Thank you all very thank much. You. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, it brings us uh, to... House bill, I mean, I'm sorry, Senate Bill 154, Senator Barfit foot that would be carried by Representative Wadsworth. What currently the, uh, the and law I do believe there's a, a amendment for this bill also. It, it is okay. an, an agreed, a friendly amendment, and, and agreed to. Uh, currently, the law is if you miss a court date, uh, the clerk's office can send notice to the Department of Public Safety, and driver's license can be suspended, and then you have to go through the process of. Uh, uh, getting reinstated you know, for this and what this bill does originally the bill was is that if you missed uh, two or more court appearances they could suspend your uh, driver's license and then there's an amendment on here that changes that to if they miss one or uh, if they miss more than one and the other thing is if they fail to make payments uh, notice can be sent to the Department of Public Safety and driver's license can be suspended in Originally, this bill had six or more missed payments, and, and then there was some negotiation going back and forth where it went to two to four, and finally they, the parties settled on if they missed three, three or more uh, uh, payments, then their driver's license can be suspended. But then in this particular one also is if their license does get suspended, that it can be reinstated if they you know, appear in court and uh, pay a reinstatement fee, and but but the original this bill, as is, had six missed payments, uh, two or more missed appearances, and uh, and but what this does is this makes changes to that where if with the amendment it uh, more than one missed court appearances and three or more missed payments can result in the suspension of a driver's license, but there's a procedure to reinstate them if they pay a reinstatement fee and, and appear in court. So, uh, Representative, explain the bill and the amendment at the same time. Is there any question? We'll get the amendment up here in just a second, but is there any questions on the bill? All right, All right Representative Pettis. Currently, does a judge have an option on this? You know, they don't have to suspend them if they don't want to. Is that correct? Uh, I don't know the answer, but I've not I've not 
seen a judge actually get involved in that issue because I don't think a judge actually has authority to, uh, and I may be wrong on this, but I don't think a judge has authority to keep a license from being suspended. I think that they're part of the Department of Public Safety and they, they make that decision. Well, the Department of Public Safety does not have a, a choice, but a judge does. Judge is one has to sign the order to send it in to the Department of Public Safety. <coughs> Do the, I so if the judge don't send it in, you don't get suspended. Okay. According to my judge, this is going to tie their hands and say they have to send it in now and they have to suspend them. My judge is totally against this bill. She said it just takes their discretion away because right now they have the discretion. And it's just like my judge said, every case is different. And if you do it this way, you're making them do everybody the same. Uh, it's just, it, she was just totally against it. Okay. And I think there's several judges I talked to is totally against this bill the way, even with the amendment on it. It's tying their hands more because they're saying they have to suspend them now. Yeah, I understand. So uh, and, let, let me follow up. I've spoken with. Can I come back? Hold on just a second. I've spoken with several uh, representatives that have a lot of concern because of their judges in their area, but I also heard from the Association of Judges, and they have taken a neutral position on the bill. So just for full disclosure. And, and I, I've just been brought this. Uh, if you look to page page two, uh, line 44, it says, notwithstanding any other provision of law, a judge may only order an individual driver's license, driver's license to be suspended for failing to appear in court. So that, uh, direct me to that again. Uh, page two, line 44. And I think that section, that section may give the judge the discretion. Attend of the legislators that pursuant to 150 of the Constitution? Yeah, we don't have that. That's not. Now, if you on page, uh, I, you look on page one. Look on page one instead of two. In line uh, uh, 14, 13 and 14. It says, notwithstanding any other provision of the law, a judge may only order an individual driver's license, driver's license to be suspended for failing to appear in court when either of the following occur. And I think that to use of the term may would give the judge that discretion. Well, that's not how my judge reads it. <clears throat> I know. Where, where are you reading that at again? Um, Page one. On page one, what line? Uh, line 13. Uh, 13. Uh, 13. 13 only order an individual driver's license to order. Privilege should be suspended for failing to appear in court. What is the following occur? Yeah. May. Yeah. <coughs> okay, Representative Jackson. Well, with that language, must it, it, it is an option. It, it's not. It's not mandatory. It's may. You you may. Or you may not. And I, I, and I, that's the way I look at it. And but it's going to also help our, our our consumers as they trying to get back and forth to their jobs. So this is going to be. A, I think it's a good thing. I've spoken with uh, several of the groups. Uh, Aaliyah is. Uh, not opposed to the bill. If the attorney general gets the amendment we're fixing to offer here in a minute, uh, they will not be opposed to the bill. Uh, the judge association has taken a neutral position just for the committee's uh, information on that. I also know that there are individual judges who have spoken uh, and should have with their individual legislators and voiced their position. So just for full disclosure, that's where the various agencies stand any other questions on the bill? Let's go ahead and get the amendment. You've explained the amendment, so is there any question on the amendment being offered? Uh, and we'll get it on the bill, and then we'll, we'll go back to discussion. So I'll entertain a motion on the amendment. It's been explained. Move to adopt, Move to adopt the amendment. <clears throat> all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, so now the bill's before us as amended. Uh, any questions on the bill? All right, Representative Pettis and Representative Fidler. On page three, line 60, it says, after a final conviction, I know we're talking about convictions, 
final conviction means the money is paid. Courts do not send in convictions till after everything's paid. So if they never pay it, they never get convicted. And then they always talk about the point system. If you're not convicted, you get no points. And this does not, this makes it harder. If the longer you drag it out, they can get several more tickets. The, the bad drivers is what the, the point system is set up to get people, the bad drivers off the road. This is prolonging it even longer. It gives them more time where they don't get the points on their driver license because it says under final conviction. Final conviction means when all, everything is paid before they send it in to Alia. So this is really dragging it out and we're keeping our bad drivers on the road. That's it. All right, Represent Fiddler, then Represent Morris. I just had to um, second the what Representative Pettis said. Our <coughs> judges don't read it that way with the May. They they feel like this is taking away their um, discretion to, and they feel like this is going to to uh, just jam up their courts. Um, and that's the feedback I'm getting from my judges. I, I've not I've not had any feedback from either one of my judges. Sorry. Representative uh, Morris. And then uh, Representative Pettis. I haven't um, actually received any feedback either, but I, I was just wanted to go based on um, bad drivers. So it was <coughs> once once upon a time for me, I was in school. I had got pulled over and I had some tickets. Um, prolonged, I, I, I was paying my tickets, but wasn't paying them as fast as I should. But I was going to school. So I got pulled over again. Luckily, an uh, officer had um, compassion and let me go. But everybody that's receiving <coughs> tickets are not just bad drivers. Some of us just had a, a bad moment. It could have been a moment where you just, just so happened your tag expired and you didn't know, and you got a ticket. Um, you put your seatbelt on or your seatbelt was broke. It Many different things could have actually taken place. So I just want to say thank you for the bill because it would have actually helped someone like me who was going to school and work and then just in the midst <clears> of <throat> got just a couple of tickets and it was hard for me to pay them off at that time. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you for your comment. Representative Gray? Uh, in proper time, we'll read back to me for a favorable report. All right. The, all right um, second. Okay. We got a motion for roll call vote and a second uh, by Fiddler motion uh, made by Pettis um, we also have a motion on the floor for favorable report uh, clerk call the roll Mr. Treadaway. yes Mr. Stringer. yes Mr. Jackson here Mr. Bedford. yes Mr. Bolton no Mr. Engel Mr. Ashton yes Ms. Fiddler no Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 have it. The bill has a favorable report as amended. as amended. That brings us to a motion for adjournment. I'll entertain uh, that from uh, Representative uh, my, my, my Harbison. <laughs> 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 Hold up. Before we do that, we got a question by Representative Jack. Uh, uh, I just want to thank you. Uh, I tried to get a roll call and you just ran me right over, but thank you so very much. All right, for clarification, Representative Jackson called it after the vote, nor did he have a second. <laughs> but we're, but we're going to work on our communication. We're going to work on our communication. <laughs> so, got a motion by Representative Harbison to adjourn. And, and, and all in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Hey, Chris. Uh,